let's welcome the first presenter, Anna Heinzmatt, who is going to talk about uh, advanced solar module applications. Anna, the floor is- Good morning, yours. everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, can I share my screen? Yes. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. So I'm giving a short introduction in advanced solar applications. But before doing this, I'll just shortly talk about my background. I'm working at Fraunhofer Institute for Solar Energy Systems in Freiburg. We have about 1,400 people working on solar energy and about roughly 50% of them researching and providing services on photovoltaics. With regard to PV modules and power plants, we have, of course, a large department on module technology development. Then we also have a department working on module calibration, testing, and degradation analysis. And my department mainly works on the PV system, integrated PV applications, and forecasting. We are also providing a set of industry services starting from feasibility study, studies, um, module benchmarking, field inspection and failure analysis, and um, operation and maintenance optimization. So now I'll talk about what will come up in the future, what we are working on already since a little bit of time in the research and also in the industry. So we have, we call it integrated PV because we have a lot of synergy potentials. One is the land use, which also in, in, increases social acceptability. The other is material, material e efficiency. We use partly existing mounting structures. And then we see a huge synergy in climate resilience and carbon check capture. You can see this here. Here's some integrated PV technologies. For example, uh, starting with a vehicle integrated PV, where we integrate the solar panel into the car, electric car. We have the building integrated PV. I will talk a lot, of, show some pictures later. Uh, we have integration of PV in the urban environment. Of course, a floating PV combining the land use of water bodies and photovoltaics, road integrated PV and agrivoltaics, where we combine the usage uh, for agricultural production and PV production. Let's have a quick look at the potential for Germany. It's different in every country, but I think overall, a lot of our land is used for agricultural production. And this is why the technical potential, so the theoretical technical potential for agri photovoltaic is very huge in Germany, but also in Europe and all over the world. Another huge potential are, of course, in buildings, not only the roofs, but also the solar facades. And of course, we have all this the road integrated PV and parking lots where we have already infrastructure, which we now can use also for PV. And then we have a lot of artificial lakes and dams. So let's start with the building integrated PV applications. We see here a huge variety. Of course, we have the rooftop application integrating into the roof. Um, we have integration into facades, which becomes a design element. We, we see here the example at the Fraunhofer is a research center. We integrated colored modules in the Fraunhofer colors. Uh, we have here an example for semi-transparent PV modules, which still allow the light inside the building, also here in our institute and another building. And we have, co of course, many other options, like here the, the shades in front of the building or on the rooftop. So this becomes very diverse. And the question, I think the challenge is, on the one hand, there's a lot of rules and norms, which has to have to be adapted. And this might be a mass product, but 
partly it's also very specific for the design and the building. Then we have the road integrated PV where we have a big chance in noise barriers. On the other hand, this is also a challenge because PV modules reflect the noise very well, but we want we want to cancel the noise here, so we have to combine it with noise cancelling elements in an intelligent way and also maybe yeah, be smart about the application. We have, of course, roads where we can uh, add a canopy above bike roads or vehicle roads. Then we have, uh, of course, parking lots, which is a huge potential and side lines areas next to roads. The next topic, which is very big already, of course, is a uh, floating PV. We have uh, floating PV on inland lakes. Uh, this is the first two examples. Here we see also a lot of diversity, uh, still how the floating PV is designed. We have a combination with hydro dams. Uh, the picture below, for example, shows a hydro dam in the Swiss Alps with very high altitude and snow load, very difficult conditions. And we have the combination with the, the vision of combination with offshore wind in the future. Uh, for example, the Netherlands are working on it a lot, or below uh, from Norway, oceans, and with uh, um, like a very different solution for membranes similar to fish farms. So here's a huge diversity, and this means also a huge diversity in evaluation and how to evaluate how to design these systems. Um, with regard to the modules, of course, we have additional challenges. We have uh, we have uh, movement, mechanical challenges. We have bird droppings usually on the PV modules. We have we need to solve the anchoring and mooring and um, electrical safety, corrosion issues. This is just some examples. We have a little bit similar situation in agrivoltaics where we also have a huge diversity. We see here a fixed third system, and below there are raspberry berries. So, this is one of the specialty crops which very well agree with agrivoltaics. Um, this is an extreme system in Germany, a prototype with a lot of steel inside here that we can also see. One of the challenges we have additional material needs. This is another example here for interspace agrivoltaics, where we basically have a ground mounted system, and in between the rows, we can do agriculture. This is an example from like a garden type agrivoltaic system. Also, uh, many systems are just basically combined with grazing of animals, as we see here with the sheep, or we have the vertical PV here on grasslands, um, where we have to take care about the shading, of course. So what we see is a big uh, variety on system, ground mounted and overhead, and what's really important to take care of is also the modules. So either we need a tracking system, we uh, need bifacial modules and have additional bifacial gain, or we need uh, additionally in the future semi-transparent modules to allow also enough light availability for the crops. This is important for agri-photovoltaics that if the crop doesn't get enough light, uh, it will not grow correspondingly and this this is what we have to research on and work together with agricultural industry. Also, we have an advantage here of cooling due to the uh, plants below the module. So this is also additional crop protection and land protection. A new thing which is coming up uh, specifically in the European Union to for carbon capture, uh, areas which were formerly dry and wet uh, were for many years used for agriculture and they dried out and they still emit a lot of carbon 
direct dioxide, and that's why they are, part of them are re-wetted. So we have a re-wetting of peat soils. And um, how should the farmers gain uh, money? How could this be economically feasible by adding, agri uh, adding photovoltaics? So here we have the challenge of uh, that the PV system is in the in the wet, but also on land. So it's a mix between floating PV and agri PV, agri PV basically. And we have the challenges of anchoring and corrosion. Another thing which is more and more coming up is the inclusion of biodiversity measures into photovoltaics plants, um, taking this into account during the design to and already add specific seed mixtures which are adapted to the region where the plant is installed. So what do we need for the future as enabling technologies? As we saw for the, so for example, for the building integrated PV, the design is very important, colored modules, modules which has a very have a very um, where the design looks very smooth we can't see the pv cells for the vehicle integrated pv we need on the one hand a lightweight design this is also important for buildings to integrate it into large trucks or to integrate pv in roofs who are not uh, who cannot carry so much weight then, for example, for the vehicle integration, we need a very high efficiency because we have only a very small area to integrate the PV in. For the agrivoltaics, it's very important to have these transparent, semi-transparent modules also on the market, and also increase the bifacial use, the, make use of the bifacial yield in the tracked systems. For the floating PV, of course, the corrosion will be an issue in the future if we look at offshore floating PV. So this was my overview on the technologies. And um, my summary is what do we need to advance these applications? So we have to adapt the technology and still achieve low cost, which then uh, a challenge is the diversity versus norms and standards, which are not existing partly, partly they are existing, or uh, individual countries have individual standards. And I think it would really be good in the future to have a broader standards, international standards for agrivoltaics, for floating PV, for road integrated PV and building integrated PV. And then of course, um, if we, use the land uh, for different purposes or the structures. We also have interaction with the environment. And um, there's a lot of worry, for example, for floating PV, if this would negatively impact the water body. And by designing the PV system in an environmentally friendly way, we can even enhance uh, the positive effects like reduce evaporation, for example, and um, also we need uh, legislation and approval procedures for these novel technologies. So this was my presentation. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, thanks a lot, Anna. I think now it's really looking like PV is, uh, is really everywhere. So. Uh, one question from my side. So there are, you know, you have shown so many different applications. So mm -hmm. what's really more interesting? Because you are also analyzing. So what's really more interesting among these? You know, also the boundary conditions. Why this is more interesting? Can you uh, explain a little bit? Sorry, could you repeat the question? Yes, so what I want to ask you is, uh, you know, you have shown so many different applications. So uh, let's put it this way. What is your favorite? Ah, 
Ah, my, I, we need them all. And uh, I, I, th I think um, I really like the combination. Uh, I mean, I'm coming from a large scale power plant applications and that's and and with this regard i think floating pv will also be very relevant in the future combined with hydro dumps or combined uh, with open pit lakes and also agrivoltaics uh, i think there's a huge chance also to reduce uh, water water scarcity uh, because we need a lot of water for agriculture and uh, if we have PV on top or between or have more shade, so this is like a trade off between shade and light. And this is, will be a huge chance for the future. Okay. And, and so there are a few questions also here in the chat box. Uh, so what are the concerns of using, um, you know, backsheet based PV modules in, in, in floating PV? Um, can you comment on that? I think for backsheet based uh, modules, of course, uh, there, as far as I know, uh, most of the floating plants you prefer to use glass glass modules right. because, of mm -hmm. course, for backsheet modules, um, I think it's good to have additionally testing done. To of course, I see the chance if you have a very good encapsulation for these also. This also it depends a little bit on the floating system. If you have additional reflection from the water because you have distances between the rows, then it might be useful to have uh, also bifacial modules. And if this is not the case so much, then the backsheet modules can also have a chance there. Yeah. Okay, okay. I think uh, you know there are uh, several questions that are popping up in the in the chat window. It would be really nice if you if you can stay and answer these questions in the chat, right? I can I just type answers in the chat? Okay, yes, yes, I will yes, do yes. that and so, look forward to discussing to you in the chat. Absolutely. Thank okay. You.